Hey everyone, Pam Savage with Young at Heart Creations, and we are going to paint everything sugar and spice and everything nice tonight. We are going to be doing a little girl's bench. The bench itself is not little. Let me grab it. It is 21 inches wide, so it's a pretty big one. So I'm going to be filming at a little bit different angle. To, I'm standing up. I know I don't look any taller standing up than I do sitting down, or that's what all my kids tell me, because I'm only five foot, but hey, dynamite comes in short pack or small packages, right? Okay, so we're going to be putting uh, several little cute pink things on this tonight, some flowers and some dry brushing. Not positive that we'll get finished, but um, I think we will. But I'm going to set that aside a minute, because I did want to uh, let you know what all we're going to be using, what I use to get to the point that it is, because it was just raw wood. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to, um, I read a, we, in Bible class Sunday, we, uh, or, or maybe it was worship Sunday night, I'm not sure, I don't remember, but we were studying the book of Philippians, and Paul is the writer in Philippians, and we, um, we read the verse in Philippians 2, 14, and I definitely needed to hear that, uh, this verse this week. Not that I'm a complainer, but sometimes you just get overwhelmed. But anyway, let's read the verse. Uh, Philippians 2, 14, and it says, do all things, doesn't say some things, it says do all things without complaining and disputing or arguing. Um, I don't argue. I don't think I do anyway, <laughs> but I'm, I don't like any kind of conflict, any anything like that. But I did catch myself complaining this week or that I had so much to do trying to get ready for the craft show that we have coming up. I'm leaving for a retreat Thursday. I'm trying to get things prepared to leave for a teacher for my Bible class Sunday so that, um, you know, it'll be all prepared for them. I was trying to get ready for tonight. And, and I also had um, some medical things going on that I was having tests done for. And, I, you know, I caught myself going, I don't have time for all this. I'm overwhelmed. I'm too, you know, just too much. And then we read on and it tells how, you know, Christ suffered all things. And he never complained. He never complained about what he was having to go through or that he had too much on his plate um, I mean, he had the cross on his plate, and never did he did he complain. Uh, and then I sit and I look around at how many people are going through, um, you know, so many things with with COVID, with their family members, and uh, just seeing post after post with illnesses or loss of loved ones. I, I you guys know that I just had four funerals uh, in less than two weeks, and um, you know, but Paul even in prison. He was in chains, and he, he didn't complain. In fact, he used that to, um, to teach the, the jailers um, you know, his joy and to show Christ in him. So I'm reminding myself not to be a complainer when I think my business is not going as strong as it should or I can't get everything I needed painted in one day, which sometimes I want to do that. But so uh, let's think about that verse this this week and um, see if maybe we can apply it to ourselves. I know it helped me. It made me stop and think and um, a little bit about, you know, I don't have anything to complain about really. I really don't. Okay, so in a my voice is, we're beginning to think it might be some of the medication uh, that I'm on that is making my voice hoarse so much. So I apologize for that. But let's go ahead and get started. And again, uh, we are at a different angle because the piece that I'm doing is rather large and I can't do it. I can do it sitting down, but then you wouldn't be able to see what I'm, I'm doing. So, and I've kind of just not completely sure how I'm going to finish this out. So again, you're going to go on the journey with me and we'll see what we get. This is kind of my practice piece for the table and chair set um, that I've been working on. I want it to all be kind of uh, matchy and then I have the little kitchen set that I'm going to do. When I have a really big piece that I'm doing, especially furniture, I don't use the craft paint. 
Uh, I typically don't because it takes so much and it takes so many coats. Um, I use, oh, and it's still pretty full. So this, I know it's backwards for you. It's Olympic Assure. And I'm, I don't remember if we got it at Walmart or if we got it at Lowe's. We probably, yeah, we did. We got it at Lowe's. So it's um, interior and it's Olympic Assure and it's the paint and the primer mixed in. So it's all paint and primer together. So you don't have to worry about priming it. It is paint and primer mix. And this is the white satin that I use. Um, they've got, you know, several different sheens that you can get, but I use for what I'm doing, I use the satin. So this is a gallon and it lasts me quite a while. Uh, but it just really gives a nice, nice finish. All right, I'm gonna set this over here. The brush that I use a lot when I also didn't bring, I also use a little foam roller because it gives it a really pretty finish. I feel like I'm really up in y'all's face <laughs> standing up here. Um, but this is an angle brush. It is, I'm not sure what the brand is. It's a two inch. This one, it's kind of worn off of it, but I used to get them at Lowe's, Blue Hawk. I think you can order them online now, but uh, Lowe's does not carry them anymore. But there is another brand, and I just don't have it up here with me, but the, this one came from um, Home Depot, and I love the angle. I've used this one a lot, but when you get it, it's very, very precise. It has a really good sharp edge on it. It's wonderful for when you're painting a house inside to go around the door trims or up to the ceiling. It just leaves such a good edge, and you don't get it all over everything. My favorite thing about it is getting in the tight spaces the handle is rubber. You know, you have the wooden handles and it's so hard you can't get in there because the handle gets in the way. This one just bends right out of the way. But that's what I used on the table and the chairs and this bench that we're about to use, uh, or that we're about to paint. What we're gonna do with it tonight, we're gonna dry brush. I'm gonna use, uh, I've had this for probably 10 or 15 years. It's the Poodle uh, Poodle Skirt Pink from Deco Art, and I just took it and had it matched and had the same paint. I had them tinted uh, because I was using it so much on some things that, that I was doing. I didn't want to mess with just the little bottles uh, with everything. So that's my base, uh, and it's just in an, I just washed out a, a dishwashing liquid uh, container. It was empty and I washed it out and that's what I've had it in. Seals really well and again it has lasted me probably 15 years I've had it here and I'm still using it so it works out great. I went ahead and um, did the little flowers. I went back and forth. Do I want to do pink and purple? Do I want to be do pink and um, the orangey color? In, but I decided to just go with just pinks. So these are the two flowers that are going to go on the end, but I'm going to use them also to trace on the top. But before we get started with that, I want to dry brush the top of it. So again, this is so big. It's 21 inches long. Here's the design of it. Typically, I would be doing this on my table downstairs. But I did want y'all to see the, the process of it. Anything Little Girly sells so well at the craft show. It, it always goes really fast. Okay, I've got a chip brush. This is dry. I just dried some paint in it. I had several that had some black on it, but I was a little bit nervous about using one that had the, the black on it. So let's go ahead and put us a little bit of the pink on here. And we're going to put it on our brush and take it off of our brush. So I'm gonna do a, just a little line here. Oops, let me get you down where you can see. And again, this is kind of all experimental, so we'll see, but I'm gonna get you down here where you can kinda of, sorta of see what I'm doing. If you're on, be sure and say hello. Let me know where, where you're from. We definitely have gotten some newbies um, recently and Think, let's see the last week I've gotten two or three new new followers on there so I know we've gotten some 
some new ones that are following. So say hi, let us know where you are, where you're from. And if you're a painter, but thank you so much for being here. Okay, so to dry brush, this is a chip brush, a one inch, and I've just gotten paint in it and have not washed it out. I just kind of wiped it off with a paper towel a little bit, but let the paint dry in there. When I'm doing a country look, I do brown or black. This is an old one that's got paint in it. You don't want to wash it out for dry brushing. You want to let that paint dry in there and just set it aside. Okay, so we're going to get paint on, but then we're going to wipe most of it off. Okay, and I'm going to go, I'm not worrying about keeping it perfectly straight. I might have to come back because this is so long and meet myself in the middle, but let's just start up here at the edge. This took about three, three coats of that white because it was just raw wood, had not been treated at all. All right, so I'm just going to hold my brush up, and I know you can't see this whole thing, but you'll catch me kind of in the middle. Hear it kind of scraping? Because those bristles are really dry. And that's what you want. Okay, so I'm going to skip down about, oh, an inch, inch and a half to start my next one. And they're not going to be perfect. Okay, skip about an inch and a half. Just eyeballing it. Add a little more up here. It's kind of hard for me to see with this ring light. So I'm going to add a little bit more there. Okay, and I'm going to put that one a little bit closer because I want one right here on the edge too. super windy here in Sherman, Texas today. So I was hoping that we didn't lose our internet. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit right here on the edge. Just to kind of even it out. So we've got our pink going across. Now we're gonna come and I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way out. Okay, I have a tiny little pencil mark right here that let me know the, um, the middle where it was. inch and a half. Just kind of have to judge it. I mean, just guess with it. Now you could get precise and measure it if you wanted to. Okay, and I'm going to put one more over here on the edge. Alright, say hello to me if you're on here and where you're from. Now, I'm not mashing down. If I were to mash down, I would get a more solid line, and that's not what I'm wanting. 
I'm just wanting a hint of that paint going across. So we're going to have just enough paint to finish that out. Okay, now I'm not gonna dry, I'm not gonna wash my brush out. I'm just gonna lay it over to the side and let it be drying. And I am gonna dry that right quick. Hi Peggy. I'm gonna dry it with my heat, new heat tool that I got. It's called Ranger Heated Craft Tool. It is so much quieter than the hair dryer that I've been using and just perfect for lives. Really, really like it. We got a lot to do to this little thing tonight. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside and let that just uh, dry a little bit more because we need to get, um, we're going to put some flowers on the edge and on the end. So I'm going to bring it down here. I've got my Arcana up as high as it'll go so that you can see the big piece. But I did want to show you an easy way. I have showed you before, but this is a easy way when you've got little things that you're painting tiny things and you're going, how do I hold it? What do I do? Okay, we're going to lay it about right there. If I can get my fingers off of it. And then you just want to, the sticky side up, and then the two end pieces, you want sticky side down to keep it in place. Now, if you were doing a double-sided item it might not work as well because you might pull the paint off so let me get it as tight as I can sticky side down on that side and I'm going to pick the best side of the flowers I have two different sizes and what we're going to do is put them on the edge of the bench where it was curved we're going to do uh, we're going to put those there all right, so I'm sticking them down. I think I want the middle one to be pink. And then the smaller ones to be the darker color. Okay, so we're using the Poodle Skirt Pink. And then I'm using Royal Fuchsia, Deco Art Royal Fuchsia. Okay, let's go ahead and do the poodle skirt pink first. And that is something that you can do. I don't know if you ever thought about it, but um, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot, either one, they can match a color. If you have a color, just paint it on a piece of wood or something and take it out and let them match it for you. Okay, and I'm just going to use a flat, this is about a half inch flat, um, the wording's off of it, but it's about a half, a half inch. And let's go ahead and get the, I want to go ahead and get these done so that they could be drying. See, I don't even have to pick them up. Since they're uh, on that tape, it holds them very still. Don't have to worry about the back side because I'm going to glue it to the bench so we don't have to worry about that. We had a cool spell come through here. Uh, I think it just got in the upper 70s today. Yesterday it was 100. Um, and so today in the upper 70s it was really, and I figured we would get some storms, but we didn't get any last night that I'm aware of. I always know when the weather's about to change 
um, my hummingbird feeders, same thing last year at the same time, the honeybees discover the uh, hummingbird feeder and just take it over. Last year, I haven't gone down there uh, this evening to see how many is on there, but last year, I bet there were I bet there were 200 little bees. You couldn't even see the flowers on the on the hummingbird feeder. I mean, the whole base of it was just covered in bees. And I am highly allergic to wasps and bee stings. I don't know about the honeybees. I've never been stung by one of them. But if I get stung by a wasp or yellow jacket, I have to do an EpiPen and go straight to the emergency room. So uh, I wanted to get out there and get the water hose and shoo them off because the hummingbirds really need all that extra uh, food right now because they will be migrating here in another week or so and they really try to get um, as many nutrients as they can before they head out. Okay, so let me smooth that out a little bit. Let's go ahead and dry those while... Um, I still got this other pink out. It's going to take another coat. See how quiet that is. Isn't it awesome? I leave, uh, and maybe some of you on here leave uh, also for Erica Wallace's Wallace House Designs, her retreat in Shreveport, Louisiana. My husband and I will leave um, Thursday morning, and we'll be back Sunday night or Sunday evening. So I have been packing like crazy or uh, trying to decide what I'll need to take and what I don't need to take. And trying to get things painted. I've been on a base coating. I've got so many things that I've been base coating. I like to base coat things in white. I just think it makes the wood, uh, the colors pop. And so I've been doing a lot of base coating so that when I do get back, I can really hit it hard. I want to get the little table and chair set finished. It's base coated. I've got all the white done on it. Um, so I'm wanting to get it done so that I can get started on the little kitchen set. The kitchen set is yellow. That's how I found it. It was a uh, sitting by a dumpster when we were helping my daughter move. Somebody had just thrown it out. And it was just sitting beside it. So there was no way I was going to leave that there to be thrown away. <laughs> so but it really does need to be repainted white. So I'm just gonna do it to match everything here that we're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a minute on its own and let's get some of that Royal Fuchsia and do the two small flowers. Won't take much. Such a pretty color. These flowers I got um, all different sizes. When Tamara Bennett had one of her live events, I don't remember if it was the last one or the first one that I went to, but she had some things in her booth for sale and this was one of them. I got a whole bag. There's tiny, tiny ones and then uh, the largest one is the pink one that we're doing. A hundred flowers, all different sizes. and. You guys know me, I love to embellish with um, things that give a little bit of a 3D look. I use buttons a lot, but I do use a lot of flowers. Especially when I'm doing little girl, little girl things. I didn't want to disturb the bees. I mean, I know they've got to eat too. And they're probably about to migrate themselves. I don't know, but I'm like, wow, that's my hummingbird's food. Okay, I think these colors really complement each other well. Makes a nice, nice shading color. With everything going on right now, we've got so many. I've got two people in the hospital from our congregation that are just still fighting for their life and it's so sad and easy to get down and um, 
So I put this apron on today. I know it's backwards for you, but it says, um, it says count your blessings. And it looks kind of fallish, so I decided to wear it to remind me that even with everything going on, we still have many blessings to be thankful for. Now this color is covering much better. I did not base coat in white. Sorry I can't get you closer. That's as close with it that high up as it will go for me. But we'll let these just sit aside. Okay, I'm gonna dry them and put one more coat just to make sure. So quiet, but it is quiet, but man, does it get warm. I mean, you will burn your hand real quick. It was, I got it off of, off of Amazon. It was only $35. Can y'all hear me better than with my regular one? It just really is quiet on this end. <clears throat> Peggy, can you still hear me okay? Mine's kind of flickering on this end, and I just wanted to make sure. Can you still hear my voice and see me okay? And we're going to do some little, little decoration on this front quick. Y'all know me. I can't leave anything as is. Oops, I just... Just drop some of that on that pink one there. Hope it got it. We'll go over it with a little bit of the light pink. Great. Okay. Good deal. My daughter, uh, where she goes to church, they had a homemade ice cream contest. Sunday, so she had me come up and I go to her house and show her how to make my cookies and cream homemade ice cream. I said, well, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to give you the recipe and I'm going to stand beside you and tell you what to do and, you know, how to make it that way. And so it will be yours. And I think there were 12 entries and it won second place. So she did good. I noticed I'm not the only one that does this, but when we're drying, a lot of times we'll do our hair dryers like this. And I'm going, you know, it really dries faster if you just kind of hold it in one spot and let it dry it and move on. But I'm always catching myself. So I'm trying to get out of the habit of doing that and just kind of going around <laughs> like this. But I've noticed I'm not the only one that does it. Okay, so let's put a few little embellishments on this so the the light pink we're going to put some um, of the dark pink of the royal fuchsia we're just going to kind of put some dots around it and I know that's hard for you to see but I will hold it up when I get finished let me get a little more so all I'm doing is using my daughter the daughter and I am just going around the petals and making dots. Just around each petal. There's so many more details that I could add to this and um, if it were earlier in the year, I would, but I'm just going to put one right there in the center. I'm running out of time for this craft show. It's November the 13th, and I have paint party that I have to do. I have, um, I will be face painting at our fall festival for our, con our congregation. 
not face painting, I'm sorry. Somebody else is going to do the face painting. Um, I have pumpkins, wooden pumpkins, that the kids will be painting at my booth. So I've got to get everything ready for that. We decorate our, our booths. We usually do trunk or treat. Everybody backs up to the uh, entry door of the, of the building. And we decorate our trunks, open the trunks, and turn our flashers on. Everybody dresses up after worship. Um, they run and put their costumes on, and then they make their rounds to every trunk and get their bags full of the candy. Well, we decided to do something different this year, and we're doing a fall festival out in our parking lot under a big tent, so I hope the weather cooperates. Okay, so I did the, um, and I'm probably going to go back in with some white also that just makes it pop, but um, we're going to do the fall festival, just something different. We've just had so many deaths in our congregation and so many people sick that um, the elders just decided that we needed something to lift everybody's spirits and just to get to be together. Okay, so on this, uh, the small flowers, the dark ones, I'm just doing the same thing. Just adding dots around the petals. If you don't have a daughter, you can use the end of a pencil, the sharpened end, or the wood end of your paintbrush, if you have one that's pointed enough. And we'll put a pink one in the center. Now I have to be careful because these dots are wet and they will stay wet for a little bit. I know this is time consuming, but it's all the little details like this that set yours apart from everybody else's. So I feel like it's really worth it. And I hope that it's gonna make some little girl very happy. I did one a couple of years ago. The table itself was the shape of a flower. It was huge. Um, I think it was 42 inches across, but I did it in pink and purple, and then the chairs, and it sold really fast. One in the center. Right, I'm going to start over this one so I'm not leaning my hand over that one. I think that'll be easier. And then we'll go back and put a little bit of white in. When I'm doing the little girls, things like this and using these lighter colors and kind of pastel palette. I don't typically add black to it. All right, one more. Pink. I apologize that I can't get you any closer up here. I was smart tonight and fixed a double helping of um, supper last night so that we would have leftovers for tonight and then last week when I had my live I put something in the crock pot so it was supper was done by the time I came up here to do my live and my hubby didn't have to to wait okay so I'm going to go ahead and put some white dots in there too because it really needs some white on there to to set it apart or to make it pop. Hi Betty. Hi Vicky. Okay.
Okay, if you're a newbie on here, let me know uh, if this is your first time to watch. And if it is, I'm typically not at this angle, but what we're painting tonight is pretty big. So I'm having to stand up for part of it. So I've got the my uh, phone, my camera, up as high as I can get it. All right, I'm going to move to a smaller dotter so that I can get it in between the dots. Here's the one I just used. Here's the one I'm going to move down to. Or we'll go down to this one. A little bit smaller. And it'll be easier to get in between the ones that I just did. Doesn't take a lot. But it just makes the other one stand out. And I'm not making these large at all. And then let's go around it. Okay, let me see if I can get that off without destroying it and let you see the difference. Okay, so here's with just the light pink. Try not to mess up those dots. And then here's with the white mixed in. Just adds a little more daintiness to it and just give, makes the other colors pop on there. Okay, let's go ahead and do that to the other ones. And I'm just dipping it in and just letting it kind of hang off, just a little drippy. We'll go ahead and just, because we're going to do it to all of them, so I can just go right down the row. And I'm dipping about every two to three dots so that I can get good coverage. I don't want flat dots. Guys, I think it's only 10, maybe 11 Saturdays until Christmas. So that's why I've been kind of feeling the crunch this week. I've got a lot of painting to do. And then I want to put um, around the center dot. Three, one, two, three. Okay, so we're almost done with these. The little table and chairs in this bench have been uh, in the middle of my dining room table and my living room floor for two weeks because I've just been having to work on it as I could here and there, just a few minutes here, a few minutes there. So I would run through and paint a coat on and, and um, leave it to dry until I could get to it again. But if I stayed with it, I could probably have it all base coated really well because I like to let it dry at least 24 hours before I do anything to it. So I probably could have gotten it done in a couple of days if I just stayed right with it.
These are not perfectly even. Some of the dots are a little larger than the others. But that's what makes it look handmade. to the center. One, two, three. So I got three dots out of that one. Two, three. And I'm just scooping it up. I like to get my paint kind of in a good puddle and just scoop it up and let it kind of drip off. And I'm just barely touching. I don't want to touch it all the way down to the wood because then you kind of lose the depth of your dot. And then we'll dry these right quick and set them aside. And work on the top. Of the bench. Okay, so those are done. Now this one, um, I will be spraying it when I'm finished. I use the um, polycrylic protective finish. It's crystal clear finish. It's clear satin and it's water-based. Now, I've never used the brush-on. This is the spray. I did have someone tell me that the brush-on yellowed, but I have never had this to yellow. Um, I get this at, I think Walmart even sells it now, but I got this at um, Home Depot. And so that's what I use, Min Mimwax Polycrylic. Make sure that it's water-based. If it's oil-based, it will yellow, but this is water-based. So that's what I use to, um, to spray, you can also get it in the gloss, but and I won't be spraying it up here. I'll be doing that out in the garage um, once everything is dry. So let's go ahead and dry these flowers. Now, when you do the dots like this, the dipping dots, you have to be really careful because they're they're thick, they're little puddles. If you get your dryer down too close to it, um, your bubble, I mean, or your dots are going to splatter everywhere. Now this one doesn't blow that hard. So it's a little bit easier with this one. There I go, like that. <laughs> if I, if y'all were here, I'd tell you slap my hand. So I'm trying to just not wiggle it like crazy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I just think it probably dries faster if we keep it in uh, the spot that it needs to be in. I don't have anything for a little boy for the craft show this year. Um, last time I had some of these little benches, but I'm, I've only got one bench left and I've got to take it apart to make a pattern. Um, I did the benches with dinosaurs and then I did them with uh, monkeys hanging from trees and those went really fast. So I don't have anything at this point right now with um, for a little boy. Okay, so those are good and dry. I don't have to worry about them. Getting it all over my fingers with this tape trick. I really like this tape trick. Okay, so I'm gonna put them up here out of the way until we're ready for them. And we'll just kind of glue everything at once. Okay, so the easiest thing to do and here's the dry brushing that we did. The easiest thing to do would be, you would think, would be to, okay, we've got flowers done here. We can just glue them on, but think about it. It's a bench, so a child's either going to be sitting on it 
and this would be a little bit rough if you're putting the wood pieces up here for them to sit on. Uh, it just wouldn't be comfortable uh, for them. So what we're going to do, and if they're using it, this one is tall enough off the floor that a child can sit under it. And that's what a lot of them, that I've made so many of these, um, a lot of them sit under it because it's just the perfect height and they'll color or whatever. So this would make it hard, you know, for it to you to color when you've got a, a rough 3D um, piece on it. So that's why I'm not gluing the pieces on the top of it. Now we will glue them on the um, on the edge of it, on the, each end, and then I will put the smaller ones on the edge here. So what I decided to do, and here's my my mark for my um, for my center. So I'm going to just lightly. My fingers are sticky. I'm just going to lightly center it and lightly draw a little pattern on it so that it matches completely with our other ones. So I'm just going to use a pencil. And that looks, I can use down uh, the little curve down here. I can use that also as my guide for the center. Blue mark there. Okay, so I think we are good there. Okay, and this one's dry. The dots are dry on it, so I'm just going to very lightly I mean, I'm not putting any pressure hardly at all. I could eyeball it and do the flower too, but why go to all that trouble trying to get it just right when I've got a pattern right here? Okay, so I've got that on there. Perfect right there. And I think we will go ahead and put two out beside it of the smaller ones. Now it is much easier to paint a separate piece than it is to paint on a flat surface because you have to control your brush more. Just a tad there. I did one of these for a little girl at church. Oops, I moved it. Oh, I guess it was about almost 14 years ago. And they said they still use it. Okay. So we've got those painted there, and let's do, okay, we'll do this one in the pink. And we've still got some pink here, so we'll just go ahead and use it yet. Now on these, we'll do um, some shading, and I'm just using that same flat brush Standing it pretty much on its chisel edge. Not too worried about the pencil mark showing because we're going to be shading it in that darker color. definitely take a couple of coats. My arm looks so much better, but if y'all are noticing, I don't know if you can see that bruise at my wrist. I don't know if that's showing up for you or not. 
I can't tell for this light, but it is so much better than it was. I had to have some uh, medical tests done Friday, well, uh, colonoscopy, so most of you have probably had one. You know how much fun the prep is for that. Not horrible, <laughs> but anyway, um, so she went to put the IV in. And I said, oh, you're going to want my other arm. That arm always gives problems, and the veins blow in it. She said, oh, no, I've got a good one here. Um, she was the sweetest, sweetest little nurse. But I said, okay, well, you could go ahead and give it a try. It wasn't, oh, less than three minutes. She said, oh, okay, <laughs> you're right. You know your body. So anyway, the vein had already blown, so I've got a good old bruise there. And she got it in the other one just very quickly. Okay. Cool that down a little bit. My hair dryer has a cooling button. We have not had a little a baby girl in our family for, let's see, our youngest granddaughter is, oh, she's going to be 15 here pretty soon. So it's been 15 years since we've had a little girl, and our youngest grandson is six and a half, so we haven't even had a new grandbaby in six years. But that's okay, we got more to come. Okay, now I'm gonna leave that a little wet because we're gonna do some shading on it. I'm gonna switch to a different brush for my shading. This one up. I've used it so much. So I'm just going to get some of that base color. Kind of dirty my brush up a little bit. And then just on the very tip, not much at all. And we'll go ahead and, let's see, how do I want to do those? Let's go ahead and put a center in it first. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I'll tell you what, let's, I want to do it a little different. Let me get it dry and put the center in and then I'll, I'll get it wet again. To do the center of the flower, I'm just going to use a little sponge dauber because it's just about the right size. Very lightly. Just enough to kind of give me an idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. Sorry, I'm talking with a faint brush in my mouth. Okay, so that gives me a rough idea of where I want it. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of white in the center. And I'm just flattening out a round brush. I'm just going to go right in the center of that. Not real thick. It's gonna make the other color pop. And it will make our shading look much better. So 
I'm holding it straight up on the chisel edge and I've got that little tiny piece of um, our little tiny corner. I think that it's gotten a little bit dry. Let me open it up a little bit. It's got kind of crusty on the top, so I'm going to open it up and then wash my brush out. I want to get some more of that pink on there. And just a little on the corner. And that white's just going to be kind of underneath. like it better with the white. So let's load our brush with white. Again, I did not do this beforehand, so bear with me here as we trial and error. Much better. Typically, I would have this in my lap doing it, so it's a little out of my comfort zone standing. I'm just not one to typically stand up. A little too much water in that. While I paint, I know a lot of people do. is actually a little bit large for it, but we're going to make it work. Did y'all see the full moon last night? It was so pretty. Okay, so now we're switching back to pink, the light pink. Just a little bit on the edge. A little too much water. And we're going to need some more pink. This is Poodle Skirt. Poodle Skirt Pink. So I could do it two or three different ways. I could do it like this, but I'm going to do the individual petals like this. So I'm going to start at the um, circle, the center of the flower, and get a little more of that pink on there, and just round it up. Really makes it stand out. Okay, let me see if I can hold that up for you. See the difference? And then we'll add some more details to it.
You want to make sure that you're putting your uh, shading color on the, the right tip. Okay, so I'm going to have to kind of turn it. I'm a directional painter. So this one is going to be behind this one. So we're going to come down to the flower, the center of the flower. Smoothing out my ridge there of the base coat color. Add a little more of that pink. And we'll start where this petal stops. And meet in the middle. Smooth those ridges out. And we'll do that all the way around. You just want to blend it in. You don't want it real harsh. Now this color is very, I mean it really contrasts, so it really shows up what you're doing. And sometimes that could be a little intimidating. And this way of shading is still new to me. Um, I've shown you several times the other way how to double load it and then blend it on your brush and then shade that way. Now if it does get too dark for you, if you get a section that you know you think is just too dark, just pick up a little more of that white, I mean the lighter color. smooth it out. I am adding a little bit of moisture to my brush every few minutes, but I don't want it real wet. I'm wiping it off, blotting it off, dipping it back in just a little bit in that corner. Now it does kind of in some spots for me because this wood has dimples in it. Um, and you can see those dimples, but it's not gonna hurt it. That's just the way the wood is. And you just paint around it. A little bit too much of the lighter pink in there. So I'm going back over it. And hoping that I'm getting it where it's supposed to go. Because the ring light makes it really hard. Okay, I'm just smoothing that one out a little bit. That one was a little, a little harsh. Okay, so just one more to go on that. Now it's the last one, so I'm not going to start all the way down here. I'm going to start kind of where the petals meet. Well, I guess we could. And just meet, just come out where it, where they meet. See, I've got a ridge of that pink there, so I don't want to let that dry. And I'm just twisting around as I go. 
smooth that ridge out. And by the time you get all the details on it, any little mistakes that you have in there are not even going to show. Okay, I do want to get a little more of that white. center so our dots will show okay now I'm going to take a small liner brush it's a Royal Majestic and it's a zero liner very very small and we're going to take this dark Royal Fuchsia add a little bit of water to it See, it was getting pretty Pretty dry sitting there. And then we're just going to do our little petals. I don't know what these are called. Straight up and then curve out. The more pressure you put down on it, the fatter that they will be. All right, let's get our daughter. Daughter. Okay, we're going to start with the white. It's kind of getting dry on me too. I'm trying to not waste it. Now if I were doing, probably if I were doing the pink and purple, everywhere these crisscrosses meet, and I could do it with these, these colors too, but um, you can make it a little darker with the, the darker color. But I was afraid that would be a little much because this color is very much darker than this pink, light pink. Okay, I am going to pour a little more of the darker because my other petal is just about dry. And we'll go in between with the smaller end and we'll just put one right on the end of that line of dots and then we're going to do a highlight stroke a comma stroke Okay, so with that same liner brush, I'm going to pick up some white. Getting quite a bit on there. And just underneath those dots, just going to do a highlight. Being careful not to sit this on the little flowers that are sitting there. Okay, and then with the smaller end again, I 
Hang on, I see an ant. A very big ant. Got him. I have a not so little gecko in my closet that I've not been able to catch yet. So I'm really checking my shoes before I put my shoes on. Okay, so these next little flowers, they are small, so let me see what brush I want to use. I don't want to fill it. Trial and error, trial and error. All right, let's try this one. This is a Crafter's Choice Royal Lang Nickel, and it's a number six. And it's a, a flat. Let's see what, and I might change. We'll see. I'm going to erase a little bit of that pencil line so it's not quite so dark. I want it just enough to where I could see it. That I don't have to do three or four coats to cover it. <sighs> okay, so let's try this one. I might switch to a smaller one. We'll just see how it goes. A lot of dimples. On the wood here on this spot try it around flatten it out a little bit okay so switch to around see if I can get a better edge on it with these dimples that's in the wood just kind of outlining it first and then filling it in First coat always looks kind of sad. You can always see your brush strokes with that first one. some of the ridges here. Okay, well that one's drying. I'll go ahead and move over to this one. Now I'm going to have the little, uh, the tiny little, um, my tool that I have that I like to use. But again, you can do it with just using your daughters. Uh, but I'm going to go on the edges here. And then we'll also have some greenery in here. Don't know if we're going to have time to do all of that tonight but I promise I won't finish it without you. The table and chair set that I sold last time was going to a little girl. I'm in Sherman, Texas, about 50 miles north of Dallas, and my table and chair set was going to a little girl in New York City. I thought that was so cool. It was a Christmas present from her Mimi. Oh, 
are so pretty. So I didn't get to see a picture or video. I told her to. I gave her my address. I said, send me a video or something of her opening it, but I never heard back from her. Okay, so let's dry those. Now, notice what I did with this round. This is good to line with, um, good to do comma strokes with, but dripping water everywhere. Um, when you need to do something like that, if you'll just flatten it out, if you're needing like a small flat and you don't have one, just flatten the bristles out on this one and, and you can get pretty much the same effect. Might take a little more effort. Still looking pretty rough, to me anyway. But when we start getting all the little, uh, the greenery and all of that on there and then all the other details, it will all come together. better already with that second coat. Probably we'll put one more coat on it. And I'll put four or five coats of the sealer on this because it's for a child and you know how rough kids are on things. They're going to be sitting on it with a zipper on their jeans or um, so many different things. There's no telling what they all go through, <laughs> but all the furniture and stuff that I've painted. Um, but I do like to really extra um, put several extra coats of the sealer on it so that it's protected. And coming all the way down and then we'll put some white for the center like we did on this one try this and I'll look up to see if there's any comments. Sorry, there's just so many details on on this one that I'm trying to get as much done as I can quickly. And it is going to take one more coat. Thin that out just a little. But I don't want that water on it. Too much water on my brush. Had a drip on it. There we go. Hi, Veronica. And Ms. Judy. And CJ. We had a bunch of you hop on here. While I was busy. Alright, let's get you back down. Hopefully my Archon doesn't fall. Okay, let's dry it just a little. My cord almost doesn't reach. I have to get an extension cord. I sure do like that though. It's a little pricey for $35, but it is 
So far, I'm really liking it. Okay, so now I'm not really worrying about brush strokes on this third coat. I'm just getting coverage on it because the brush strokes don't show. After this third coat, it doesn't show what direction you're painting. And with the time, we get the little dots on. You won't be able to see much anyway. This is the flower shape right here, these small ones that I did a big um, gingerbread man out of. There's the head, the two arms, and the two feet. I made a cute, fat little gingerbread man. He already sold. But I got it at, um, I think Dollar General, the flower. And I thought, well, you know, I looked at it and I kept looking at it. I thought, that could be a gingerbread man. Okay, well, let's put some white centers. Spaces there that looked a little splotchy. I want to put a center on them. Let's see what it looks like with the white center. Let's see if I want to do that or if I want to go with the pink center, light pink center. I think white will be okay. Just didn't want it to look like it was the stool underneath it that was showing through. Now on these, we will have to do some shading or highlighting with the um, with the lighter pink. details. Oh, I'm going to need a much smaller flat brush to shade in these little flowers. So let's do, I'm going to dirty it up with the white, and then I'm going to come in with, uh, get just a little dot of that lighter pink, and we'll see what that does. May not be even dark enough to really do anything. really not so I think what I'll do is dirty with the white and take just a little bit of that dark color just a little bit and 
see if we can give it a little bit of shading in there. That'll be enough on that. That it'll make it stand out. So let's do the same thing over here. Got some water dripping. not taking much and you may not it can even see it but it is giving it just a little bit of a shaded effect even though it's the same color as the petals okay so let's see what highlighting it with the lighter pink does So we're going to get our base coat color and then just a little dot of that pink. It's tricky because they're so tiny. To remember which is my base coat color and what I'm doing here. Standing it up on its chisel edge and just working it around, just barely sticking the corner of that brush in that lighter color. By the time we get our dots on there, I think it's going to look just fine. Just dipping in that light pink. This wood is a little bit hard to shade on and highlight on because it is the, the dimply areas. A little bit makes it just a little bit harder to get a smooth stroke on it. A little more effort. I lost a little bit of the center color, so I'm going to... Go back over it. Okay, so the last one. ridges out. Now this would drive some people crazy. All these little details. But I just think it makes it. Okay, let's 
look at the difference. I hold it this way. Just the difference that the shading makes. I'm going to go ahead while the paint is still good and wet and do the other one. And then we'll add our details to it. Getting a little dry. I think I measured the table and chair, uh, the little tabletop. I think it was. I think it's 27 inches in diameter so there's no way that I can do it up here in my little craft room so we'll probably have to go down to my dining room table to do it just got to figure out how to get my archon down there because I have it permanently fixed on got it taped down to the shelf that it's on. Okay, let me add a little more of that center color. Turn, having to turn this one, but I didn't the other one. Okay, almost done with the shading on that. <clears throat> anyone on here that's watching that's going to the retreat in Louisiana this weekend besides me Tamara Bennett is going to try to have one in Dallas sometime this summer I will definitely be going to that one too. I want that dark back in there. And I'm still working with just this tiny little puddle that I've got here. in these centers. Just right in the center, just to clean them up a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna take our small liner brush with the light pink 
and I'm going to water it down a little bit because it's really gotten dry. So I'm just adding a little bit of water there just to make a puddle where it's a little bit, a uh, little inky. You want it kind of an ink consistency. Straight out. Some are longer than others, which is perfectly okay. So I'm doing the center one straight and then curving the two side ones out. in the middle. Add a little bit of water in it. Alright, let's dry those a little bit so they don't splatter everywhere. Now right now they look like they're just floating in the air, but once we connect them with our um, greenery, they'll look, they'll look good. Okay, let's go ahead and do our little flowers on the edge here. I'm going to make me a new puddle of that royal fuchsia. Now again, you will you will do this with your individual daughters. the light pink centers and then we'll have little green vines okay we'll come over to the other end do the same thing Wash that right quick. And we'll put our light pink, pink centers in there. I 
like a movie over here. Y'all don't look at my mess. I've been painting like crazy. I got brushes everywhere. Plus, I've been trying to pack for the trip. Okay, and I rubbed my arm across one right there, so I'm gonna add a little more with the, this end of the daughter. You have to really be careful. So these dots stay wet a little longer. All right, let's dry those a little bit and let's put some um, greenery right quick. All right, tell you what, while those are drying, let's go ahead and glue our wooden ones on the ends here. If we can do that. Well, I'm going to have to draw these dots a little bit or they're going to go everywhere when I turn it over. So let's get them set just enough so they don't drip. I'm sure liking this little dryer. I do recommend it. Okay, so while those finished drying, Let's go ahead and get our, I'm going to use the Stick Fast, it's um, the Thick, C-A, Thick, and I ordered it off of Amazon, so it's the Stick Fast, is what it's called, and man does it stick very quickly. Alright, so I'm going to center this little flower first. So I can scooch it up a little bit. So you can see what we're doing here. Alright, so I'm centering it here. I don't want to put it up too high or it won't the lip of the bench will cover it. So I'm going to bring it down kind of low where it goes low. And then we'll put the two little ones up a little higher. So I'm going to put some on each petal. Because you know how those kids are. They are rough. Okay, I'm going to hold it for just a second. And it is set that quickly. Now these will be up just a little bit higher. And I'm making sure that I have them, uh, the petals, all kind of facing the same direction. You do not want to get this on your fingers. Okay, it's set. I can't move it. <laughs> That's how quick it is. And 
And what I do like about it, I mean, it's not forgiving if you've put it in the wrong spot, and it's too bad. But um, I do like it that it comes out of the container. I love the E6000 glue, but it sticks out of the, I mean, the nozzle gets so gummed up that you can't get anything out of it after just a few uses. Okay, so let me turn it over to the other side. Here's what we've got on that. Let you see it here. And I'll do some greenery there as well. Let's go ahead and do this side too. And then, we'll, then we'll put the big ones on the ends. So down low. Now I could reuse this for several different times but since I'm going on a trip I like to leave everything clean so I'm just going to throw that one away I don't like going on a trip until my house is clean I don't enjoy a trip knowing that I left with not everything in its place I like the dishwasher to be empty all the laundry done Now, it doesn't matter if it is not exactly like the other side because you can't see the two side by side. Now, if you could see them both, then yes, that would make a difference. But this, you cannot see the other side, so it doesn't matter as long as you get it pretty close. Pretty girly. Okay, so let's put on the end. Now, this is going to be tricky. See if I can do this to where you can see. I think you can see it right there good enough. So our large flowers are going to go on the end here. And this one's a little warped, so I'm really going to have to hold it down. Bring it down just a little. I really want to get some on the edges since that is warped. Too short. I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Story of my life. Hi, Carol. Um, the glue is stick fast. And this is the CA Thick. Uh, Tamara Bennett had it on one of her fa uh, Friday Fab Fives. I love it. But you just cannot, it's like super glue. You cannot get it on your fingers. And it sticks fast. So you don't really have much time to play with your whatever you're putting on here. This little flower is kind of bowed. So I'm having trouble getting it to stick. Now my tendency is to wipe the excess off with my finger. Do not do that. I wet a 
baby, well, I mean a Q-tip, <clears throat> and use that. You don't want to do a Q-tip dry or all that cotton will get everywhere and you have to be fast. So I think we're good on that. Now I put that one a little low because on this edge, on the other end, there's a little bit of a uh, bad spot right here in the wood and I wanna cover it with the flower. So that's why I put, put it just a little bit lower than I normally would because I want that to cover. Now this one doesn't seem to be warped. It's that real thin balsa wood. Underneath of the stool, I just put two coats on it so it's not completely covered, but I don't mind. It's on the underneath. Anything that shows has um, three or four coats on it and is covered well. Okay, so that one is stuck. Stuck, stuck, stuck. And we've got on both edges there. Okay, let's go ahead and do a little bit of greenery so that you can see what the greenery is going to do to it. And I'm going to use Hauser Medium Green Deco Art. And I'm going to use a liner brush. Which liner I want to use here? I've got some new ones that I haven't used. So let's see what we get. So that's the Hauser Medium. And then we'll come in and do some little leaves as well. And I'm just going to make some little vine-like squigglies, I guess you would call them, just to kind of connect the flowers. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it because I do want it to flow. Come back and put some little leaves, but I'm going to do those in a different color. Not get putting much pressure at all. And let's go ahead and do some here. coughing down there. And we can 
to put big broad leaves here on there's just so many different ways that you can do it um, and again if I had more time I would be doing a lot more detail on it but I've got to get things ready for this show I like to start and go out and uh, lift up as I go. <clears throat> Turn this around just a little bit. I'm going to add a little more water just to thin it out. This is a Royal Langnickel number one liner. Okay, I'm going to switch to a filbert. Here. My little tiny one finally bit the dust. All right, let's see if we can do it with this. All right, I'm going to add some light Hauser green. Here's the medium. Here's the light. So just enough variance. That it gives us a little highlight. So I'm switching to a small filbert, a number two. I would honestly like my smaller one, but um, let me look in this cup to see if there's one any smaller. No, not with a good edge on it. So let's go ahead. We'll, we'll make this one work. So I'm going to put that light Hauser medium, I mean light Hauser green on there. But then I'm also going to add a little bit on one side, the dark. And we're going to just pull in. Okay, so you're going to pull out and in, press down, and pull in. So light on the bottom, dark on the top, and we'll do one here. Whatever color, when you're mixing colors like this on the top and bottom, whatever color is on the bottom is going to rise to the top. That kind of sounds backwards. But that's the way it does. Pressing down. Lifting up. Pressing down. Lifting up. And let's do, let's see, we need two there. And now we want some on our little ones. Just going to do the same thing. I'm not going to switch brushes. So let's do one here. Anytime you start adding greenery 
it just automatically looks like a garden flowers running out of paint there So I'm getting both colors at once by loading it like that. And I'm starting with the lighter color on the bottom so it comes to the top and mixes in with that darker color. Still using the same load, didn't have to reload. Okay, it's getting daintier and daintier. Stuck my thumb in it. Light on the bottom, dark on the top. Now, if you were doing big leaves, you would just use a much bigger brush. Uh, I may do some curly cues coming out of here just to give it a little more character. Making the leaves all go in the same direction. my green over here. Okay, let me grab a baby white. Let me see if I can get that off of that white. That's one thing about working with white is any little thing you do definitely shows up on it. All right, saved by the baby wipe. All right, so we've got leaves on all of those, but let's go ahead and do a few little, kind of make these curly cue. So I'm just loading that liner brush. Gotta be careful not getting my hands in all of these. Reload, added a little more water. Okay, so that added a little bit of whimsy to it. I'm gonna turn, turn it around. Still being careful with these, these leaves that are wet. Using that, still using the uh, liner brush and the Hauser Medium. <clears throat> I'm just gonna come up the opposite direction. I 
I am not very good with curly cues. Let's do a couple there on the big flower. those as they are. Okay, I may stare at it a few more days and see what, um, if there's anything else I want to add. I do have to go through and put the um, same thing we did here. We will put it on, I'll do it on the edge here. Let's go ahead and do just one so that you can see what it's going to look like. It'll be the same thing that we just did. And then I may go through and put a few little dots on here. Don't know, sometimes I just have to look at them a few days. I'll set it somewhere where I have to see it. And I'll just look at it and look at it and decide, oh, I don't know, what do I want to do? Okay, so we're going to meet this flower up here. Turn it around this way. Could just add details and add details and add details. It's hard to know when to stop actually. All right, we'll put a couple of leaves on it. want to go backwards. Remember which direction to go. It's getting a little dry. Those are going that way, so I want these, this one to go. And that kind of goes out, 
just want to make this one go in. So there you are on that. And again, I may come back and put just a few little dots. I don't know. I don't want to overdo it. But the way I have this, no matter which direction you turn it, uh, there's not a top side, bottom side. No matter which way it is, it, uh, it looks fine. Now, what I might also do is... Um, I could come through and splatter it a little bit. Not sure. Not sure if I want to do much more to it. Um, I do have to still do the end here. And um, I will just do a little bit of greenery here. Uh, just like we did on the other. Okay. So. Wow. Did I do it in two? Oh, I did it in, in two hours. Y'all know me. I'm so slow. Um, so for two hours for me. That, oh, I'm getting, getting texts like crazy. Okay. Hi, Patty. Let me get through all those texts. My goodness. I'll get rid of one and two more come. All right. Hi, Cindy. Um, that is, I wish I knew a little uh, the little girl that would be getting it. But anyway, so there we go with that. Very little girly. And so I'll be doing something along the lines of the same thing on the table and chairs. And um, that won't be until next week, though, since I'm leaving Thursday for the retreat. And um, I won't be back until Sunday night and doctor's appointments Monday, Tuesday. So um, it will definitely be then <clears throat> next week before we get to the table and chairs. We'll probably do the chairs first. Uh, and we're going to do it just like we did this. So, uh, but I'm just, I'm going to have to do it down in the dining room because they're so big. Um, the tabletop is so big for my little table area. It's tiny. I mean, it's so cute and dainty. It's little, but for this space, it's, um, it's big. So don't forget to please uh, sprinkle the video with all of your friends. I've gotten so many new followers and that is awesome. I am so, so grateful to you guys. Um, something else that I would like to show you to do soon is how to uh, paint measuring spoons. Aren't those adorable? They're so cute. Anyways, uh, I've got three different patterns that we can do those on. But that was a quick and simple for me. Uh, quick and simple. I am going to probably add a few more little dots. I can't stand the plainness of it. Um, and I do need to do greenery on this side before I forget, but that's it. So, um, that's it in that video. And I may hop on here tomorrow. I picked up a couple of things that I'm wanting to share with you, but I've already been on here for two hours. So I will get on sometime in the morning and, um, and show you what I got that I'm, I'm excited about and, uh, nothing big, nothing big. I didn't get a laser cutter or anything like that. So, but it is something that, um, that I'm going to enjoy. So, I will share it with you tomorrow when I get on. Thanks, everybody, so, so much for watching and for hanging in there with me. And we'll see what little girl gets this. All right, y'all have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye.